Hello everyone! Today we'll be taking a look at typographies in Ant Design. So in the last video, we created this button and we talked a bit about button and icons. But in today's code, I'm going to get rid of that button entirely because we're going to just be looking at typographies. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all of those. The thing that we're going to need to import from Ant Design to create typographies is import typography. And, and then what we can do is we can import titles from Ant Design. You're going to have to import it with const title. Uh, equals to typography. So basically what we're doing here is we are destructuring title from the typography object that we have imported from end design. So we can go and use that title component here in our app divs. So in title we can add something like this is a title and I'm going to save this and let's just go and run uh, look at how it looks like. So it actually looks really really nice this title this font and I'm not sure what font exactly is that that they're using but it looks quite nice. And there are a few levels that we can configure to the title. So you can add a level attribute that says like um, 2. That's at level 2 and it's going to be smaller. We can add level 3 and it's going to be even smaller. So it's basically descending. We can go all the way to 5 and it's going to be the smallest title. At least I think number 5 is the smallest level that we can go in and designs titles. But I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to just leave it at level, let's see, level 2. Let's level 2. Let's just leave it at that. Another thing that we can destructure from the typography object from ND is the text object. The text component is something that we can use in ND as well to customize our text. So let me write this is a text. And then let's render that. And you can see a text is just a smaller version that we can use for our content. So let me go and take a look at what attributes we have access to in uh, the text component. So you can in VS Code, if you're using VS Code, you can use the hotkey of Control and Space, and you can look at all of the possible properties and attributes that you can type in your components and objects. So I'm going to do type equals to. So we can see that here that we have type of danger, success, uh, warning, and secondary. So I'm going to do type of danger. You can see it's just red. It's basically just the colors of the text. I can do. Uh, Warning, and I think it's going to be yellow or orange. Yes, it is yellow orangey. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it a style. Uh, I'm going to give it a style of font size. Font size of, let's do 50 pixels. And I'm going to change this to uh, danger so it looks more intimidating. Okay, now let me get rid of that. And I'm going to copy and paste this text uh, component for a few times because there are a few more attributes that I'm going to show you that so that you can differentiate each component from each other. So one of them is disable, and this will basically disable the text, and it's going to be grayed out. And then there's also mark, which is kind of like highlighting in Ant Design, and there's code, which basically makes it look like code snippets that you can embed into your websites. And then there's keyboard, and then underline. We're going to take a look at all of these later in the preview. And then we have a delete. So this is uh, like red deleted text, and then there's strong, which is basically just bold text, and then there's italic text. So let me save this. And then I'm going to go and refresh this and actually I'll actually give it a line break between each component. So I'm going to save that and let's refresh our page. So you can see this, this is a disabled text and when we hover over it, you can see that our cursor gives us feedback to tell us that this text is disabled and I can't highlight that. Then there's the highlighted text and this is the code text and then this is the keyboard text. So uh, it's actually quite, quite similar, code and keyboard. You can see that it's just like, it's just code snippets. And then there's underline, there's a strike through, and strike through is just a delete. So earlier on, I said that delete text would look red and deleted, but it's actually not. It's just end design's way of saying strike throughs. And then this is a bold text and this is italic text. So nothing special there. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, the next component that you can import from end design's typography object is the paragraph object. So with the paragraph object, you can do stuff like make editable text and you can copy the text with a button to your clipboard. And I'm just going to show you how to make these two uh, editable text and copyable text because that's like the most common thing that we can all use. And the others, if you're going to use the others, you can just go to the documentation and look at the code and see how it's done. So let me go back to the code and show you how it's done. I'm going to delete all of these because we don't need them anymore. And then let's import, um, let's import paragraph from typography. Uh, paragraph is a component that we can use in JSX and then let's say pa editable, actually let's do copyable paragraph. And then uh, to make it copyable, we just put copyable here in our attributes and it's just as simple as that, it's just a copyable attribute in, in your paragraph component. So let me refresh this and let me change the uh, style to make it larger. So 
those of you on small screens can see it better so font size font size of 50 pixels so we have a copyable paragraph that you can just click on the icon and copy and when I go to the new tab and I paste control uh, command V paste and you can see that it's copied and if I change this to something else this is something else that's going into your clipboard and then I'm going to copy this and then new tab and I can paste and you can see that this is exactly the text that's going to get pasted in and finally let's look at how we can make this text editable so here we just have to replace this copyable thing into editable and then when we reload, reload this and we can go back to our browser tab I can instantly change this text here now one thing you're going to notice is that it actually looks really ugly because it fills up the entire width of the parent element which is currently the viewport of our browser window so I'm going to change that I can say let's uh, put width in the styles here let's put this to be a thousand pixels still quite crazy but not as crazy as it used to be and you can see it's still stuck to the left side of our screen so I'm going to give it a margin left so margin left let's give it 500 let's take a look at that now when I click edit you can see it doesn't look too crazy anymore but it doesn't stop there so instead of leaving the editable property just like that you can add an object to that prop so we can say like a tool tip let's change this edit me please so when I save this and I reload this you can see that when I hover over the icon to edit this text you can see it says edit me please so this is something that you can change the tooltip isn't the only key that you can add into this object here so when I do if I do a comma here and I do a control space you can see all of the available props that you can add here I'm just gonna do icon for now let's do icon equals to uh, let's import an icon from uh, end design so uh, we talked about icons in a previous video so be sure to check that but let me just uh, look at the edit icons here let's see does this look same okay we're gonna take this form outline icon here let's just click on that to copy that I'm gonna do icon equals to form outline uh, I'm getting an error here because <laughs> This is what happens when you code in too many languages at the same time because that should be a colon instead of an equal sign. So let's import this form outline icon from ND. So import form outlined from at ND at end design and dash design slash icons. I'm sorry. So let's save that and let's reload this. You can see that the icon is going to change to our custom icon. One thing that you're going to notice is that if I come here and I go and edit this text, this is now another text and I hit enter and you can see it just reverts back to its original text and it doesn't really do anything and the way we can fix this is to use states so the way we can put our text in state here would be to add the unchange prop here so unchange is going to take in a function that we're going to define soon so let me import state from react once again this is nothing specific to end design this is more of a react um, technique so I'm going to import use state from react and inside of our functional component here you can say const of um, my text and set my text equals to use state let's begin this is the initial text in state so if you don't know what I'm doing here this is basically how you can set states in react um, if you want to learn more about this I have videos that cover uh, states in react so let's go to on change here and pass in that function that set my text function here so set my text is basically a function that we can call to change the state uh, which is stored in my text so I'm going to just pass that into our on change here and I just realized that I spelled this wrong so on change let's save this and then instead of putting this is something else going on into your clipboard here I'm going to put in my text so my text is just a variable that contains the state uh, information I'm going to save that and let's reload this and you can see this is the initial state and when I change this uh, I, let's say this is changed and remember from the first time we did this before we implemented state uh, when you hit enter it's going to revert back to the original text but when we use state when I hit enter you can see that it actually changed and it's going to be persisting across our edits this is changed for the second time and you can save that and you can see it's actually changed this time now of course if I reload the browser tab here you can see that it goes back to its original text so if you want this text to persist across different browser windows and different users you'll probably want to use a persistent backend for this where you store all of your information so this is how you do typography in end design and in the next video we'll take a look at how we can manage the layout of our app in end design